Welcome everyone. In today's video, I wanted to talk about UXD. UXD is a brand new stablecoin that's come to the Solana ecosystem. So it's an algorithmic stablecoin backed 100% by Delta Neutral Position. So I'll talk more about what that is, why it's important and why you should be interested in UXD. I think that UXD has the potential to be the sort of brand new um, hot stablecoin that everyone uses in the Solana ecosystem, you know, if they can execute well, similar to how everyone uses UST on Terra or how people might be using MIM quite a lot when they do their um, DeFi transactions on like Avalanche, for example. So um, let's talk about UXD, why it's important and how it solves the stablecoin trilemma. So the stablecoin trilemma is essentially this. A stablecoin can either be uh, two or three things. And that's decentralized, stable, or capital efficient. So, for example, we could take LUSD. So, that's the uh, stablecoin that you get from Liquity, and that's on Ethereum. So, that stablecoin is decentralized and it's stable, but it's not capital efficient. So, you're able to mint uh, LUSD from depositing ETH into Liquity, and then you can mint the stablecoin against it, but you have to. Um, be I think like 110% collateralized for that ETH. We can take another example, um, USDC or USDT, stable and capital efficient, but obviously they're centralized. So again, the stablecoin trilemma comes into play there. Uh, they are only two or three. And lastly, we can talk about something like empty set dollar. So it's decentralized and capital efficient, but it's not at all stable. If you look at a chart of uh, MT set dollar over the time, you can see that it's definitely not kept its peg. You know, the same thing with Ampleforth as well. Uh, decentralized and capital efficient, but its stability, you know, it's, it's put into question. So let's talk about how UXD protocol works, uh, how the stablecoin is minted, uh, and exactly what this 100% delta neutral position means. So Multicoin Capital, they are one of the backers of uh, UXD, and, and they wrote a little thesis about you know why they think it's important and um, basically just how UXD works. So UXD protocol creates fungible USD peg stablecoins called UXD by accepting Bitcoin deposits and using it as collateral to short an equivalent amount of Bitcoin USD perpetual swap contracts. The long Bitcoin spot is perfectly hedged by the 1x Bitcoin USD short, so the value of the combined position is always $1. Whilst it does say Bitcoin here, they're starting off with Solana, so I think this article was written in like September and you know it's gone live on mainnet in January, so a couple things have changed. But essentially this is how it works, right? Uh, just assume, uh, so so in your mind, just know that this should say Sol. Someone's deposited $1 worth of Bitcoin, and then UXD um, has then turned around and shorted $1 worth of Bitcoin perp. So that's long, that's short, and if you net that out, that gives you zero price exposure to Bitcoin. So effectively, what you've created there is like a synthetic um, USD pegs stablecoin, and it doesn't have any price exposure to Bitcoin. But remember, it should be Solana. So, you know, the price of Solana could, could go up, down or sideways. Doesn't really matter for uh, UXD. It should hopefully hold um, its peg. So how it works, um, if we just take a look at Mango Markets here. So they're built on top of Mango Markets. Um, any soul that they collect from users, they deposit it into Mango Markets and then they short sell an equivalent amount of soul perpetual futures against it. So you can see here that the, the funding rate currently is negative. So what that means is that people who are shorting the Solana perpetual futures are currently having to pay out 31.08% APR to people who are long Solana perpetual futures. But um, UXD protocol solves for this and we'll talk about how. So uh, solving for funding rates. The first challenge is funding rates. So when funding is positive, meaning that the market is in contango, so that's when um, we'll take off this negative bit here, uh, longs pay shorts. So this means that UXD holders can earn interest just by holding UXD. But rather than pay all the funding to stablecoin holders, UXD protocol accrues a portion of those fees to an insurance fund and a portion to pay governance token holders. So why? Because when the funding rates turn negative, i.e. the market is in backwardation, as it is right now, so that means that the price of the Solana perpetual future um, is actually below the current spot price of Solana. So 
as you can see here on the order book, it's currently $99.33, whereas the actual spot price is $99.51. So, and so to encourage the um, price of the perpetual future contract to become even with what the spot price is, we have negative funding rates. So what that means is that people will, when the funding rates are negative, they'll typically come in and start longing. Um, Solana Perpetual Futures and people who are short are going to start closing that down their positions because they don't want to pay that funding rate. The stablecoin holders would need to pay funding. In UXD protocol, the insurance fund pays the funding rate when it turns negative. And in the event the insurance fund is depleted, UXD governance token holders backstop the risk in the system in a similar mechanism to how maker holders backstop risk in MakerDAO. Uh, so I what I think happens is that uh, people who hold the UXP governance token uh, essentially that governance token is just going to get market sold um, in order to pay the funding rate so essentially the value of that token is just going to get uh, wiped um, is what i'm thinking so whilst rates right now are negative on mango markets i'm fairly certain in the future uxd is probably going to inter integrate drift as well so drift is another perpetual futures dex uh, here on solana so if you look at the funding rate on the sol perps it's currently 145 percent apr so you get paid to short solana on drift right now um, the only problem that i can see right now and the reason why i think uxd probably isn't um, on Drift is that they only accept USDC as collateral here. So I know that Drift in the future is looking to accept more collateral types and their first collateral type is probably going to be Solana. So we'll probably see in the future uh, UXD actually go ahead and integrate Drift. And it makes sense that they would do so because, um, you know, it adds to sort of their anti-fragility and um, built-in redundancy if they integrate more than one uh, Perpetual Futures DEX. Zero one protocol is another perpetual futures decks going live and i think fairly soon so um it makes sense that they'll probably integrate that uh as well uh so uxd in the future is probably going to have a more diverse collateral type so so uxd right now is using soul as collateral but in the future we'll probably get eth uh, bitcoin serum basically uh anything that you see is highly liquid on mango markets and drift protocol so you know in the future as well we might get avalanche we might get atom dot ada um and so that would be really cool to do that as well because then it makes uxd more scalable um, over time so uxd uh, recently went live on their mainnet beta and let's check out this medium article so they went live on january the 18th at uh, 2 p.m utc so the initial cap for minting uxd was uh, 1 million uxd and it makes sense because you know that they're, they're new to the ecosystem uh, and they wanted to make sure they didn't crash mango markets and um that sort of thing. So initially, collateral for minting UXD is only going to be sold. But like I said, you know they're probably going to integrate more stuff in the future. After the first cap raise to two million UXD, if the protocol continues to run smoothly, the cap may be further raised by two hundred fifty thousand UXD every day until the cap hits ten million UXD. And then after the cap hits ten million UXD, if the protocol continues to run smoothly, the cap may be raised to one point five million UXD per day until reaching a cap of twenty five million. So assuming everything goes smoothly, the UXD cap will reach 200 million in approximately 12 to 18 weeks from the mainnet beta launch. So that's quite interesting. See, the thing that I think uh, might limit UXD is the size of the derivatives market, right? So, But, you know, it's predicted that the derivatives market will grow over time. So I think this is still a solid bet. Uh, but let's just go down further. And here's one important point. Early users will be rewarded for their continued support via a retroactive airdrop of the uxp governance token so you can go ahead and mint the token so you're going to need to go to their website have some soul in your wallet and then you give soul over to the protocol and then you're able to mint an equivalent amount of uxd tokens to the value of that soul so if you deposit one soul you're going to get back like uh 98.49 uh uxd in return you could also go ahead and uh, hold the uxd token so you can go to saber finance mercurial finance do swaps there or you can go to jupiter aggregator and then swap out from uh any arbitrary coin there into uxd if you wanted to uh, you could also lp um uxd usdc on saber and that's currently getting you about 13 percent apy 
you go to Mercurial Finance. Um, if you LP in the UXD, try Crypto Pool. So you're currently getting 24.55% APY. And lastly, you can also uh, stake your Sabre UXD USDC LP tokens into Sunny Aggregator and you can get an airdrop that way. So another thing to note about UXD, so they say here UXD protocol wanted to note two things that may happen during the early phases of UXD as the market adjusts to UXD's entrance. So UXD may trade above its peg of $1 due to initial supply caps. Uh, if the demand for UXD far outstrips the cap supply, then UXD may trade at a premium. This would be natural and shouldn't be seen as long-term issues with UXD's price stability as supply as the supply cap increases this pressure should alleviate so just so just taking a look so just taking a look at uxd on coin gecko we can see that it's been fairly stable since its launch uh, i mean you know it's gone above its peg a little bit by you know about three cents uh, but even during like market nukes we can see here that it still say stayed at above uh, 0 0.99 cents where I think a lot of other stable coins have been uh, hurt a lot more during the market nuke so I mean this is still early days we're still like within uh, a week or two of its launch so we'll see if UXD uh, is able to keep its promise of actually being stable but you know I, I have faith that it will do because they've got big trading firms on their side who will definitely arbitrage UXD um, you know if it goes below peg but you know this is crypto uh realistically anything can happen right uh but just taking a look at here they have uxp governance token preview so uh this is the exact details behind the governance token and why you might might want to hold it so uxp holders and the uxd insurance fund will be the sole recipients of the interest created from the delta neutral position so the interest rate will be split uh, the interest rate split will be a function of the overall health of the uxd protocol so i'm assuming um when the insurance fund is like well capitalized um, a higher percentage of the interest created from the delta neutral position will go to uxp holders so you know that you know might be a source of uh, passive income if you want to hold uxp uh, uxp holders will be able to vote on important measures such as asset management strategies for the insurance fund integration of new derivatives exchanges and collateral types uh, so you know you'll probably be able to vote on whether or not they want to introduce uh, integrate drift or integrate zero one exchange and uxp will function similarly to curves vote locked uh, v curve staked uxp will become an amount of v uxp uh, depending on time locked and will accrue additional uxp rewards in return for staking staking will be required to receive the delta neutral interest so it's quite interesting also, this is an interesting part. Given that the supply of UXP is capped, whereas the supply of UXD will eventually not be capped, the yield generated by the overall protocol per UXP token may grow quite large. So I think this is interesting because it's a bet on the growth of the UXD stablecoin. Uh, for example, we can take a look at Frax. Frax is a bet on the growth of the um, Frax stablecoin. So uh, Frax share, that's... Uh, you know, it's an algorithmic stablecoin and it's partly backed by this uh, token. So if we just look at the market cap of this, we can see that that's gone up massively over time as well. And the price has gone up a lot too. So that's interesting. Um, Luna as well. Some people look at it as a, you know, sort of a play on the growth of the UST stablecoin. And we've seen how high Luna has gone over time. So there's this really cool tweet thread that I'm going to leave in the description down below. If you want to take a look further into UXD and some of the finer points, definitely go ahead and check it out. For example, it shows that the uh, UXD circulating supply is currently sitting at $1.731 uh, million. If you're starting to hold UXD now, you know, you're early to UXD. So thank you for watching. I hope this video was informative and make sure to subscribe. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one.